Hi everyone! These cherry tomatoes grew in water using hydroponics, more specifically the Kratky method. No soil, just water in glass mason jars or old Folgers coffee jars. This was the first time I had ever grown tomatoes using the Kratky method. I made one very rookie mistake as you will see later, but Kratky was forgiving and gave me tomatoes anyway. More about that later. These cherry tomatoes actually had their start two weeks ago in the Arrow Garden. We planted the seed pods according to the directions and more than one seedling sprouted, which is normal. There are more seeds in each pod than is necessary to make sure that you get at least one plant. And then you are supposed to thin the seedlings and just leave one healthy plant in each pod. To me, thinning is akin to killing the plants, so I wanted to see if I could transplant the seedlings and give them a chance at a happy life. I decided to use the Kratky method since it works great for my salad greens and herbs, but this was the first time I tried Kratky with tomatoes. I just didn't want to throw out the thin plants from the arrow garden. At the same time, I started a cucumber plant from seed using Kratky, but that is for another video. So I'm going to pull out the smallest plants since they can't all grow in this small pod and I'm going to transplant them into these mason jars. I also wanted to experiment to see which hydroponic solution would work best so I decided I would grow some of the plants using the Grow Big formula from Fox Farms and some using the Master Blend formula. I have two gallon jugs to mix up my nutrients, one for the Grow Big formula and one for the Master Blend formula. The Grow Big formula is very easy to mix. You just shake the bottle and then pour two teaspoons into a gallon of water and shake. That's it. The Master Blend is, well, more complicated. You need the Master Blend, you need calcium nitrate, and you also need magnesium sulfate, otherwise known as Epsom salt. The directions on the back label are for mixing five gallons at a time, but for a gallon you can mix two grams of the Master Blend, two grams of calcium nitrate, and then one gram of magnesium sulfate. Okay, now it's time to get ready to transplant the thinned out seedlings. I'm using rock wool. These are one and a quarter inch cubes, and I took a scissor and made a slit in the rock wool to make it easier to slide the seedlings into the cube. I'm also soaking them in water so that they are saturated. I already set up these two mason jars with the Master Blend formula, and I set up these two mason jars with the Grow Big formula from Fox Farms. I do have another video on how to set up the mason jars with Rockwell and Net Cups and all the other fun stuff that comes with the Crafty Method, so if all of this sounds like a new language to you, make sure to watch that video. There should be a link to it in the top right corner of the screen, and I'll also leave a link for that video in the description box below. Okay, let's see if we can rescue some of the seedlings that need to be thinned out from the Arrow Garden. This pod just pops out easily from the Arrow Garden. You can see there are already some nice roots coming out of the pod. I'm trying to pull out the seedlings without doing too much damage to the plant and its roots, but they are really wedged in there pretty tightly. I finally got them out, but not without ripping the roots. But at least I didn't do any damage that I can see to the remaining seedling, which is going right back into the arrow garden. The arrow garden is set up with two pods, so let's see if I have better luck at thinning the extra seedlings from the second pod. And it was just as difficult, but it looks like I have a little more of a root with these, as you can see. I ended up with six seedlings that I thinned out. The three seedlings on the left, they have better root systems than the other three on the right, so I'm going to plant the three on the right all together in one mason jar and see if any or all survive the transplant. Now you can see why I made a slit in the rock wool, and I'm going to slip all three of the weaker seedlings on the right into this one cube. I'm putting this one into the net cup with the Grow Big solution, So these three seedlings had less damage when I thinned them out, and presumably better roots. I'm going to put one into the other jar with the Grow Big solution, and the other two in the jars with the Master Blend solution. I'm starting to have doubts about this experiment, since already there are variables other than the solution I'm using, 
and that is the damage to the root systems on the different seedlings. Not everything is equal. So I won't know if a plant grew better because of the hydroponic solution I used or because the plant was healthier from the start. So much for the experiment of trying out two different hydroponic solutions. Okay, now the seedlings are in their Rockwell home and in the mason jars. I'm going to fill in the gaps around the Rockwell with clay pebbles to give the Rockwell more stability and also to help anchor the plant down. The clay pebbles also help block out the light from filtering down into the water. I will also cover these jars with a paper sleeve for the same reason, to block out the light. If too much light filters down into the water, it will encourage algae growth and we don't want the algae to compete with the plants for nutrients. So now the Arrow Garden pods are back in their home and the thinned out plants are in their new homes. So let's see if we can get these to grow Kratky style. These plants are now two weeks old and they seem to have survived the very harsh transplant I subjected them to. Let's have a closer look and there is a root there and that is a very good sign indeed. I decided to transplant the cube with the three plants together into soil rather than continue them in the hydroponic solution. So now I have three mason jars with the cherry tomato seedlings and the other three seedlings are in soil. And all the seedlings look equally happy at this stage of the game. Now it is 12 days since I transplanted the seedlings into the mason jars and they seem to be doing very nicely. The roots have started to develop a little more. All three plants seem to be doing great. The one in the Grow Big solution and the two in the Master Blend solution. And even the ones I transplanted into soil are doing great. Just for comparison, these are the same age as the plants in the Arrow Garden. And you can see the plants in the Arrow Garden are bigger. That could be because they were not transplanted, so they didn't undergo the shock of being moved into a new environment and having half their roots ripped off. Or it could be because the Arrow Garden has an air pump, or it could be the difference in the lights, or maybe even in the nutrient solution. There's really no way to know for sure, but they are definitely bigger than the seedlings I transplanted. It's now 18 days since I transplanted the seedlings, so another six days have passed since our last check-in, and the plants are doing well, all three in the mason jars, and you can see the roots are also developing nicely. You can really leave the plants alone. They take care of themselves basically at this stage. Okay, it's a month later, so these plants are about six weeks old at this point. Let me take the paper sleeve off so we can have a look at the roots. And the plants seem to be doing fine. Now we are at seven weeks and the plants in the mason jars are really doing nicely. Here you can see one of the seedlings I planted in soil and although it is healthy, it is growing much more slowly than the hydroponic Kratky plants. But remember, it was from the seedlings that I had damaged in the transplanting process. And now for another comparison, let's have a look at the plants in the Arrow Garden. And they are doing the best of all. They even have flowers. But if you look closely at the Kratky plants, you can see something happening. Maybe the start of some buds on them as well. So they are not so far behind the Arrow Garden plants. Or is that just wishful thinking on my part? And let's have a look at the roots. It's always fun to look at the roots. You can't do that with soil. Again, for comparison, this is one of the seedlings I transplanted into soil. And you can see it is growing, but much slower than the hydroponic plants. You can see how much bigger they are. You can't see the roots on the plant in the soil, but I'll bet they're not as pretty as the Kratky roots. Here is the third plant. I pruned it here. It was growing too tall and I wanted to keep the plant a little shorter. I will need to prune the other plants at some point as well. It's now a couple days later and the plants are still doing very well. And let's take a look at the plants in the soil. And although it is growing, it is growing very, very slowly. It's now eight weeks since I thinned these plants from the Arrow Garden. And this plant in soil is still only around three inches tall. I must have really shocked it badly when I ripped it out of the Arrow Garden. But the ones in the mason jars have continued to grow nicely. And here you can see we finally have some flowers. And look how tall this plant is. No comparison to the one in soil. Okay, I can't help myself. I have to take a look at the roots. They always look amazing to me. 
By the way, I have the plants in a corner area of my house. This window faces south and this one west, so it gets lots of light from both sides. I also have a fluorescent lamp and overhead grow lights, so the plants are really getting a lot of light. We finally have a teeny tiny tomato. Very small. I don't know if you can see it. These plants are not seedlings anymore. They've been growing nice and tall, and we are now at a little more than 10 weeks since I transplanted these seedlings. They were two weeks old at that point, so the plants are actually 12 weeks old and doing really nicely. Now we are at 12 weeks since we transplanted these seedlings, so the seedlings are 14 weeks old. The plant is growing very big and putting out lots of flowers. I needed to tie a wood slat to the jar to keep the plant steady and straight, and I'm using an electric toothbrush as an aid in pollinating the plant. I'm really not sure if this variety needs it, but just in case, the vibrations from the toothbrush help to shake up the pollen in the flowers and distribute them where they need to go. You can see it's winter outside, so it's really nice to have plants growing in the house that we can eat. The winter months can be cold and dreary, and the plants really help to balance that out and at the same time provide us with some fresh produce. Okay, let's have a look. Wait, this is the cucumber plant. It's also growing nicely using the cracky method, but that's a different video. This video is about tomato plants. So let's take a look. It's now 14 weeks since we transplanted these as seedlings from the Arrow Garden, and you can see the Arrow Garden is putting out a very nice crop of cherry tomatoes, and the cracky tomatoes are also starting to put out fruit, but not as abundantly as the Arrow Garden. I staked the plant to give it support. You can see the water level is a bit low and the leaves look a little droopy, so it's time to add more water. I add fresh water most of the time, but once every two weeks or so, I add water with nutrients. Just make sure not to add too much water into the jar. You don't want to drown the plant. The plant is still growing, but here is where I realized what a mistake I made from the very beginning. Remember, this is my first Kratky tomato experience. My previous experience with Kratky is with all types of lettuce and parsley and basil, but never fruiting vegetables. Now I'm experimenting with cucumbers and tomatoes, and I learned that the same little mason jar that works for lettuce is way too small for the tomato plant. I know that sounds obvious, but somehow it did not occur to me. So next time, bigger containers for the plant, definitely. I wonder if Folgers Coffee comes in jumbo size containers that I can reuse. Well, for now, I'm going to make do with what I have, but I will use a much bigger container next time. There are multiple advantages to a bigger container. I think I can support the growing plant better in a bigger container, and also it holds more hydroponic solution at one time, so you don't have to refill and wonder if you need to refill with nutrients or just fresh water. On the downside, it takes up much more room and it is heavier to move around. I found a glass vase that looked a little bigger, but it really wasn't much bigger. Anyway, I moved the plant into it. I thought about using the kitty litter jug to set up as a container, but the pouring hole is off to the side, not in the center, and I was afraid it would be unbalanced. I really need to go to Home Depot and find a bigger container. All right, just a quick peek at the Arrow Garden, and you can see a nice crop of tomatoes growing, and back to our crap key tomatoes. They are a bit behind the Arrow Garden, but they're doing just as well. Now the plants are 18 weeks old, 16 weeks since I transplanted them as young seedlings, and we finally have a red cherry tomato, and a few more on this plant. These are really filling up so nicely, I feel bad that I didn't start them out in a bigger container. But that's part of life. You live, you learn, and then you do it better the next time around. So now we are at 20 weeks, so these plants are around 140 days old, and we have some nice clusters of tomatoes. Yes, it's always fun to look at the roots. I never get tired of looking at the roots. And here we have some red ones. We have been picking off the red ones as they ripen, and also pruning the plant since it is so top-heavy and keeps wanting more space to grow. I know, bigger container next time. The plant continues to grow and grow, and it's so beautiful. 
So the plants kept growing and eventually I transplanted this one into soil where it continued to grow for a while, giving off more and more tomatoes. All in all, I'm very satisfied that I rescued these seedlings from their impending doom. Well, that's it for this video. I learned a lot from this experience growing tomatoes in small mason jars. Next time, bigger containers. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, or all three. And thank you for watching. Bye.